uh, welcome back to easy programming uh, today I show you a second tutorial on arrays I know I've shown you a simple basic one a few weeks ago about how to input names and to get them outputted in order in reverse order and the way you specified today I'm going to show you how to work with some parallel arrays this means more than one array in a, sim in a single program uh, in this tutorial what you see on the screen is the basics. You have the comments on top. You have include IO stream. You have include string, as I'll be working with string. Then you have uh, using namespace standard int main, and on the bottom you have system pause. Uh, in this t in this program, I'm going to ask a user to input three names followed by three test grades for two tests. Uh, for this, for students, let's say the person is a teacher or a tutor, and he or she wants to get the average out and display it in a table. So, first thing we have to do is declare our variables. We'll do string, name. Remember, it's subscript three. You can change it to anything you want. You can change it to subscript two if you have just two names you want to enter. Subscript thirty if you have thirty names to enter. But once again, this is easier than entering name 1, name 2, name 3, name 4, name 5, all the way to name 30 if you have 30 names. You can just change that to 30 if you have to, but I'm going to keep it to 3. And then we have the test grades. We have int test 1 sub 3 and int test 2 sub 3. I'm declaring them in, in different lines. You can add a comma on the top and then just add it on the same line. It doesn't really matter. But uh, you may be thinking, why am I using test 1 and test 2 now? instead of using test sub 1 to sub 2 or something like that but well this is because I'm trying to get two different test grades uh, you can name them anything you can do like the first test and then the second test but these are two different variables they'll have two different inputs if they were the same input then I would have just used one and on the bottom we have float average 3 give me semicolon uh, this will calculate the average for all three test grades excuse me, two test grades per student for three students and display the output. And remember, you need a loop to display it properly. And once again, uh, you can display it without adding a loop. You can prompt the user to enter every name, you know, like name sub one, name sub two, name sub three, but that can get really messy. Uh, could take up a lot of work, take up a lot of room for no reason. This is how I like to do it. This is pretty easy. And once again, if you don't know how the for loop works, make sure you check out my other tutorial, or at least the um, simple basic tutorial for a race that I set up a few weeks ago. It explains it too. We have for i equals to zero. Once again, remember that a race start at zero. Well, the i is less than or equal to two. i plus plus. We're doing it i is less than or equal to two because it's three values is zero, one, two. Remember, don't semicolon use braces, we'll scroll down, and then we'll prompt the user to enter the name. We'll just see out. Please enter student's name. CN name sub i. Once again, the i will change based on where the loop is. So the first time the loop runs, it'll be name sub zero. So it'll enter the first name that the user inputs. And right below that, I'll prompt the user to enter first test score cn test one sub i this will input the first test grade for the first user since it'll run first it'll be name sub zero and then test sub test one sub zero and then we'll prompt the user to enter the second test grade CN test 2 sub i. It's going to be no space, sub i, semicolon, and close it. That's the end of the first loop. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, as I said before, you don't really need the loops. You can ask the user to enter like the first student's name. They can do name sub 1, and then, and then prompt the user to enter his test grades. But that will require you to have at least 9 different prompts uh, can get really long and messy when you want to edit it later or when you want to edit something in a sentence later on but anyway we're going to start the calculation for the calculation we're going to need another for loop i equals to zero i is less than or equal to two is going to be the same loop as the top i plus plus remember open braces 
and then we're going to calculate the average. Average i equals to parentheses test 1 sub i plus test 2 sub i close parentheses divided by 2. Close it. I'll explain this. Average sub i will line up with the parallel arrays here. It'll be test sub 1. It'll be test if if you want to get the average for the first test, let's say it'll be average sub 1 equals to test sub 1. Let's say test sub 1 is 100 plus test sub 2. Let's say it's 90. So divided by 2, the average will be 95. So the first average will equal to 95. Uh, it's pretty simple. I'll show the output to you later on. Just to add a space there, I'll do a C out E and DL here. Uh, it'll, so, it'll show the output later on. And we're going to need a third. Actually, we're going to need a third loop, but uh, let me just add the headers first. Name. These are the column headers. Uh, we'll just enter 10 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Looks like you can use set W, as I've shown you in a few of my other programs. Hold to average, ENDL. And we have our third and final loop. And once again, it'll be the same one, unless you want to display it in reverse order, which that's possible too. I equals to 0. I is less than or equal to 2. And I plus plus. No semicolon, open braces. And we'll do C out. We'll do name sub i. It'll display whatever the name is per loop. No semicolon, excuse me. It'll do, uh, we'll do after 10 spaces. It'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's neatly lined up. And then we'll do average sub i endl. Uh, it'll add a line after every time it runs. Close it. Remember, you have the system pause. Uh, and let's run it. Press F5. Excuse me. Press F5. Uh, debug. And it should run. No errors. Please enter student's name. Let's do Jones. Please enter test first test score. We'll do 100. Second test score is a 90. The average should come out to be a 95. The second one will do Adams. Student name. Let's do 90. And let's do 86. That should come out to be an 88. And let's do Clark. Uh, we'll do 80 for test score and 60 for the second one. What you'll see on the screen is it'll display the name based on the order of output input and followed by the average in a second column. I press enter and here you have it. You have the name. First I entered Jones, Adams and Clark. You have Jones, Adams and Clark. And if you do the math it's 95, 88 and 70. That's uh, pretty simple. These are parallel arrays. You can have as many many columns as you want, as many arrays as you want. It makes it simple. Instead of having, uh, let's see how many variables we, we would have had without the arrays here, we would have 3, 6, 9, and 12. We would have 12 variables, but we did that all in 4. Uh, parallel arrays are really useful. It's really simple. Uh, if you have any questions about how this works, feel free to let me know. I do have other array tutorials that I want to show you. There's a lot of things that you can do with the arrays. You can enter based on how many, if you don't know how many names are entered, you can also do that with the, with the while loop. I might show that to you later on as well. Uh, once again, remember you can always visit my website at easyprogramming.net. I have other tutorials. This is officially my 17th tutorial. I will be updating the website as often as possible. Uh, you know, I have classes now, I have other things, so my tutorials won't be as, won't be coming as quickly as it was over the summer. But thank you for watching, and remember to subscribe.